Peaky Blinders Season 1 Review. Hey, what's up guys, it's Josh here. Today I wanna to do a little review on Peaky Blinders season one now. I've watched season one and two right now. It's basically like an old 1919 classic mob type story. Um, it's right after I think World War I and most of the Peaky Blinders, the men are, you know, fresh out of the war and they're a little jagged, really rough, you know, kind of have some PTSD and they're basically like a street gang and I think they offer protection, things like that. They're basically just, a lower level street gang climbing the ranks. Mixing up with that, you have Sam Neill, which is, I think he's like Irish or something. He is basically like a high up detective that got involved in the situation and then kind of personally gets involved with Tommy, who's like the lead Peaky Blinder. And he kind of jumps in between. He's a full on villain of the, the season to he's kind of in the background to like sometimes he even does deals with the Peaky Blinders. He's not even like a full on villain really in this one, at least not like 100% of the time. And then he also has this informant called Grace and, and Tommy's like the lead Peaky Blinder and Grace, they're kind of slowly flirting. You could kind of tell that there's something gonna happen there, but Grace is an informant for Sam Neill. So there's kind of like this really big anxiety the whole season because you really like Tommy and you really like Grace, but Tommy me doesn't take any shit and Grace is an informant so it's just like you're gonna need a lot of episodes for them to figure that out and for them to get over it and to get together because at least for me that's what I really wanted to see here so that's the, basically the basic synopsis so let's jump into the pros that I had with this season the pros is that it's the start of an epic series I just like pretty much everything about this show the cast is very good um, the recreation of the time is very good. It's actually enjoyable watching a show that's kind of like everybody's like serious and gritty and like doesn't want to overindulge. They're just like really rough all the time. I don't know. It's just something kind of refreshing to see that there's not a lot of like really rough, aggressive, masculine men in like TV nowadays. So it's actually nice that all the characters here are like pretty rough and believable as people would be at the time. and. To go along with that, they actually have like really strong female characters in here. Like I could think of three right off the bat that are really strong, that are really unique and that fit in perfectly here. So I really like the blend of really, really strong masculine characters, mainly Tommy, he's like the best. And then, you know, also the really good blend of female characters too. And they don't feel like you're making one of the women like a superhero like you do nowadays. They fit in perfectly, they have purpose. It's just a really good balance in my opinion. Sam Neill is a really good actor here. He's really actually kind of annoying. Sometimes he actually seems kind of nasty here, but it's cause he's like such a good actor actor and I can't believe it's the guy from Jurassic Park here he's just like such such a good actor I like that it was six episodes so it's really really fast I think I just watched the Lord of the Rings and the Lord of the Rings with like all three movies with the extended cut is like almost like 10 or 11 hours so this is like five hours so it's like way less than the Lord of the Rings yet it's a TV show I just think that um the more episodes you have, the more you have to stretch it out. And sometimes a story is just, if you got a good story, don't stretch it out. I wanna see just the perfect amount of time. That's what we have here. Um, it's very, very unique. Just the feel and everything. I really, really like the actors. I really, really like the time recreation. Probably my favorite interesting thing here is Grace and Tommy. That was like the main thing the whole time. Okay, let's jump into the mixed aspects here. The main mixed aspect is, and I knew this like kind of going through, I had anxiety probably the first four or five episodes of this show because you want Tommy and Grace to get together. But you know once it gets to episode three and four and Tommy doesn't know that she's an informant that you're gonna need a lot of time for him to find out for them to kind of like let that pass and then kind of get with her. So it was just kind of like, oh, I wanna see them together so much, but you don't like you don't see how it could happen because you don't have enough episodes, you know, and same with Sam Neill. Sam Neill is built up so good, but once you get to episode three or four, you're like, you can't finish the show completely once it comes to episode six. And it just gives you this anxiety because like, how are they going to leave it? Are they going to kill somebody off that you don't want to be killed? Are they going to finish a storyline too fast and not really get the oomph out of it that they could, that they built, you know? They do leave things unresolved and I kind of don't like that. But once you look back 
at it, it's pretty much the best thing that you could have done. I just didn't like how things were a little bit unresolved, but I think this is just because it's the first season and they were just getting their, their feet wet. And like I said, I was anxious the first five episodes of this show just because I just didn't see how it was all gonna end, you know, decently and it does. All right, guys, let's show me the cons that I had of this season. I didn't have too, too many. And a lot of it is just because it's the first season. There's not that many big events that happen. Now, again, with a show, especially with all the hours that you need to fill, you're not going to have these big, spectacular events like every episode. But you would think maybe there'd be two, three, four big high up events. There's mainly two fight scenes, like a group fight scenes that I could think of and they're very, very small scale, especially once you get to the season two and season two is like, okay, this is exactly what I was thinking for like a bigger scale kind of event. But here it is a little bit small scale. It kind of does cycle through the same characters and same places. Like once you see like one or two episodes, you just basically cycle through these same characters all the way to the end and basically cycle through these areas that you've already seen all the way to the end versus like season two had a lot more scenery that you uncover the more that you got along with the season. So it was a little bit in a box. There wasn't that many big elements here, but for how good this show is, it's hard for me to even say that that's a negative because I enjoyed it so much. And really the only other thing I could say about it, it just was a little bit small scale. The only other thing I could say about it was Billy Kimber is is a little bit of a weak villain here and he does kind of serve his purpose but at no point does he pose any kind of a threat i think in season two the one of the main villains is a guy named like savini and savini this is like yeah that's exactly how you build up a villain especially for the peaky blinders he's like vicious he's rough you almost think like maybe he is gonna beat the piggy blinders because he just is like such a powerful presence and all the stuff that he does Billy Kimber's just kind of like this, this kind of like throwaway guy that kind of gets throwaway type ending. It wasn't that big. And then, so it's like, you didn't really have a main villain because Sam Neill, he is a villain, but he kind of isn't, you know, he's kind of half built. And then Billy Kimber's just kind of, He's just Billy Kimber, he's just weird, you know? And it's hard to say. So there isn't one big villain like you had with Savini, which I actually liked, and I'm not gonna get into season two, but a little bit of Sam Neill as well. So anyways, guys, really, really love this show. It is, you know, a breath of fresh air. It is so unique. If you like something gritty, if you like um, some really masculine characters, if you want like a really rough, crazy, wild ride, Definitely check out Peaky Blinders. I absolutely love it. And I'm just hesitant to jump into season three. And you know what's funny? I Googled the best Peaky Blinders seasons after I watched season two. And the first list that I saw said season two was number one and season three isn't the last. So I'm like, oh, to go from the first to the last? Like, I don't know if that's how I'll feel, but that's how someone else felt. But anyways, guys, let me know if you've checked out this show. Let me know if you want to check out this show. I'll be very interested to see what you guys think down below. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers, and I could not do it without any of you guys' help. You guys are the best. I'm having a great day out here. Hopefully, having a great day at home. See you on the next video. Peace.